Welcome back everyone for another Destiny 2 video. Today's video will focus on the new, or should I say, returning exotic called the Radiant Dance Machine and how you can create an infinite dodge, high damage melee and super cooldown build through the boots alone. The RDMs are a returning exotic from Destiny 1 that has been updated with some new perks to make them worth investing in now than before. It has a new perk that allows players to dodge multiple times without cooldown for a few seconds and this at first sounds pretty useful for PvP environments for surviving as long as possible. However, the community have found a way to make the exotic a bit too strong and now the boots are capable of allowing users to garner their super within 20 seconds or less through a single mod or two. This has now been patched and unfortunately resulted in me needing to redo my clips to accommodate the change. This is where I come in with the new and improved version of the build. I plan to use the Dynamo and Hands On mod alongside RDM to quickly gain our super up and running within the first few minutes of whatever mode we are in and then utilize our super to produce orbs of power for others and then feed them so they can produce orbs for us. A simple gesture between friendly guardians. From here we can then utilize our subclass of choice to stack damage for all and dish it back out while easily recovering all of our lost abilities. Simply put, it's going to feel like a Saturday night fever when you rock up to a match with it. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub for more content like this in the future, I would really appreciate it. Starting up with subclass, we will be using Way of the Warrior for the arc melee focus it provides and how it can link into the element worlds and hands on perk. Using RGM to its fullest requires us to think about how you can link your subclass into the exotic and make full use of the exotic perk within the time frame provided. You don't need to overthink this part, nor do you need a degree in mathematics to get the right answer, as exotic is pretty flexible within all subclasses provided. Of course, you want the best of the best, so how do you achieve that? Simply, go the easy route, and what I mean by that is to use Combination Blow, Combat Flow, and Gambler's Dodge as if your life depends on it. Combination Blows will trigger health regeneration to the user every time you get a melee kill while it's active, which will then increase melee damage as well up to a stack of 3. Combat Flow allows users to recharge their dodge fully via a melee kill and Gambler's Dodge allows us to fully recharge our melee when dodging near combatants. In layman terms, every time we melee we will be getting a health regeneration kickstart and an increase in melee damage per charge melee made which makes it easier for us to take down tough combatants in 1 or 2 hits. Upon using our melee, we can then activate Gambler's Dodge to fully get our melee back via dodging which will then activate the RGM exotic perk for a few seconds. Upon finishing, we can then activate the combat flow perk to free recharge our melee and repeat as many times as we like. What you see here is a simple feedback loop that will reward you as long as you follow the same method correctly. The subclass on its own is perfect for those that have melee on their mind, so combining this with RGM only makes the most sense in the end. When you add in elemental world mods such as a well of irons or dynamo perk, the build ends up evolving into a frighteningly powerful CQC build. The thing of it like giving a hunter a kind of monster, they're already fast and lethal so might as well dial it all the way up to 11. For weaponry, as we plan to use melee a lot within the build, it makes the most sense to focus our weapons and perks based around this area and improve subclass weapon interaction when one or two aren't in use. My primary is the Forward Path AR with 4 times Charm and Swashbuckler and is a great weapon to use for the following setup as it can aid me with further increased damage and the ability for it to return ammo to my magazine as long as I land precision shots. As melee will be compromised for the entirety of the build, having the weapon with Swashbuckler is the best choice to pick because of the benefits it grants. Not only will this work as a mini version of Vampage, but we can also instantly get ourselves to 5 stacks within an instant melee for a 33.3% weapon damage increase. Alongside this we then have the 4th time to charm perk which will grant us 2 rounds back to the magazine upon landing rapid vision hits. As AOS have the anti barrier mod for the season it makes the weapon and perk a perfect match against big game combatants to bosses of all types. When you add in the unlimited ammo that primaries have, you can see in a way we have a mini sweet business. Alternatively, the new Peacebound sidearm can roll with Swashbuckler and can have the Unstoppable mod attached as well for a great pairing for your secondary. All false promises with its slow fire rate but high damage output is a great alternative as well. Our secondary will be the Xenon class shotgun so I can keep up with the theme of a melee oriented build but also allow me to quickly close gaps while performing combat blows on combatants. 
For my role, I have the Genesis perk that will regenerate my magazine back to form if I destroy a combatant shield with it, which is great against the major combatants who are known for their strong shields. We then have the Swashbuckler for that ever increased weapon damage buff the more we kill or melee. And then lastly, we have the Assault Mag perk, which increases the fire rate of the weapon, which for me is also very handy as a boss to mini boss DPS increase once we get Swashbuckler times 5 stack going. The secondary rule will have a limited use in most endgame environments that involve certain types of champions, since it lacks the champion mods that others have. But in the meantime, the weapon is fantastic when paired with the subclass, as we can utilize the frame time for an increased boost in speed to close the gap on combatants, or run away if need be. And from there, you can plan out your next action as accordingly. For heavy, I'm using the Hazen Vengeance rocket launcher with impact casing, tracking module, and warper weapon. All of these create a god war weapon that is fantastic to use against mini bosses to bosses alike. To maximize the effectiveness of the weapon, we can use RDM's perk to reload the weapon at least 3 times within a DPS phase. Considering how powerful rockets are as of currently now, and how this weapon is rocking warpool, it can do some hefty damage in a short time frame. However, if this doesn't fit the build style you like, you can always opt into using a sword instead with their much more quicker DPS. For stats, across the board, I plan to focus as much effort into all the stats traits to get the best performance while out and about. Elemental Worlds will play key within the build and they will offer ability energy back upon activation of them, so we do not need to fully maximize one or two abilities to make the build sustainable. The main areas you will need to focus on is your intellect and strength stat, considering how often these two will be used throughout. Intellect at 60 will allow you to gain a rapid cooldown upon playing like normal, but with mods such as Dynamo and Hand on available, we can further decrease the time it takes for our super to be made available. Before the nerf, Double Dynamo and Distribution would allow users to gain their abilities and super back at an incredible rate, which for PvE was relatively fine. PvP was like a whole different story. For me to replicate the pre-nerf RDM, it will require me to utilize the dodge feature of Gambler's Dodge and Hands-On to always create a charge mini that will proc said perk. This isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things, but it does work out pretty well when you have loads of minor combatants available to pull this off on. For strength, this has been left at 50 as the natural cooldown provided is enough for general gameplay. To further enhance this key stat, I have the melee wellmaker mod that will produce an elemental wall upon charred mini kills, which will be very often to activate for users. And then we have the well of irons mod that will grant the users a 25% melee increase for a few seconds, which when combined with the subclass perks such as combination blow for further melee damage, you get a build capable of taking out ultras in 3 punches or more. This stat would also be tied in with mobility since the two areas combined with Gambler's Dodge and Combat Flow will allow you to get a full melee and dodge back to back, so the amplified damage can be repeated as many times as you like. On top of that, the Elemental Worlds will also help regenerate any lost ability, so you don't need to focus too much effort into this area at all. This leaves you with the rest of the stats which as I said previously, can be invested in however you like. Some leftover mods to be aware of. Protective Light will provide damage reduction against all combatants the moment you hit critical health. Helpful when you use your melee and dodge. Elemental Light will allow us to produce wilds upon super kills which is useful for getting certain abilities back if we run out or we need to go ahead and help our team out. And Orbs of Restoration will provide further ability energy when we pick up Orbs of Power which once again will allow us to keep our melee fully charged and grenades fairly available. Now with main bases covered, let's take a look at the mods we are using and how they play within the build. For head we have Resilience, Hands On, Dynamo and Protective Light mod. Arm we have Discipline, Anti-Barrier AR and Elemental Light mod. Chest we have Discipline, Concussive Dampener x2 and Melee Wellmaker mod. Leg we have Minor Strength, Orbs of Restoration, Shotgun Scavenger and Taken Charge mod. Cloak we have Strength, Distribution and Well of Irons mod. So I am pretty late to the party with getting this one out and I do apologise for this as it's been a hectic few weeks. Since the nerf of the exotic, I've had to rebalance the entirety of the build to make it sort of viable and usable for players who wish to use it again, and honestly the nerf given was a tad too much. It's understandable for Bungie to nerf how the exotic function with the dynamic mods, and having two of them at the same time allowed users to build super energy quickly since the exotic's dodge feature allowed you to proc them each time. 
This however could have been balanced a different way, and all they really need to do is prevent the stacking of the two same mods for double the effects, and that's it. Doing so would have made using the Dynamo mod on its own still viable, and although you wouldn't get double the amount of super energy back, you would still get a good amount either way. This would then mean using the exotic would still have a pretty great function wherever you go. Now though, the exotic is very limited in what it can do, and honestly the only place I can see the exotic succeeding in is PvP or low tier PvE. The nerf was too harsh in my opinion, and could have gone a much better way for all players. So with that adjustment, an alternative version has been created that will yield you a high super energy return and damage feedback through the best method that I could provide just to salvage the damage that our gym received. The build focuses on the melee aspect of the setup to yield you both weapon damage, increased melee damage and super build up. The idea here was to originally rely on the RGM and Dynamo mod to build up super and everything else would then fall in place. This has now been changed to incorporate RGM's multiple dodges, Gambler's dodge for getting full melee charge back and Combination Blow to increase melee up to times 3. All of this combined will allow us to prop the Swashbuckler Park to its max stack increased melee damage so most of our hits become one shots and using the hands on mod will allow us to build super energy per charge punch made. To make this even more powerful we then added in the midi well maker mod so we could produce arc wells per charge melee made and the well of irons mod for even stronger melee damage. This in a nutshell allows you to one shot a lot of things dead in game which I'm sure you all appreciate. The build with its downside works out pretty well from using it, allowing me to produce wells left, right and centre while building up damage and super as I go, and with how this setup plays in game, you end up being the highest damage dealer in terms of cleaning out high level combatants. This however is as far as the build goes because of the RGM nerf and sadly won't be exceedingly usable for most endgame content. Don't get me wrong, the build is a powerhouse if you enjoy escalating damage and are happy to use it mid to low level content and the exotic is pretty good for dodging and surviving close quarter combatants. But this is really it for the exotic as it doesn't offer anything else unique for the build. It's flexible and can work with other similar weapons and loadouts but if you were expecting a high maintained super build with a 20 second cooldown and some immense strength to back it up, well this is the best I can offer. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like on the sub and also follow me on twitter to keep up to date with destiny content if you did that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.